the chat. <laughs> Let's fix this up. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Oh, we should be going live. Let's check it out. I'm going to do a little restart here. Sorry for action for Assange. I think we're about to knock you guys out. Let's check it out. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is August 15th, 2020, and uh, it's a movie club live stream. We're going to talk about four movies that we decided to watch in the previous, I guess that would have been our first movie club uh, video in terms of discussion goes we've done a couple of i think one video anyway regarding movies before maybe a couple of videos regarding movies before but we sort of kicked it off in the previous video uh, where we recommended videos and we did a poll and we ended up deciding to watch four movies and the four movies are let me i brought up the little posters for them we decided to watch in bruges okay so that's one movie we watched, and it was about three weeks ago that we decided on this. So we're going to talk about In Bruges. We're going to talk about There Will Be Blood, which is a fantastic, fantastic movie. They're all fantastic movies, really, right? Uh, I just the reason I'm going fantastic, fantastic because I just watched uh, There Will Be Blood was the last one I had to watch or rewatch because this would have been the fifth time I've watched it last night, and it still blows me away. Reckner, how are you doing? Two amazing movies. Uh, it's an in in anim <laughs> Ding Bobber, how are you doing? Uh, Lark, how's life? Oh yes, yes, my favorite topic. I love the film. There will be blood. Daniel Day Lewis is outstanding, outstanding. But we'll talk about it, right? The third movie we're going to talk about is 2001: A Space Odyssey, right? And we can talk about it. I'm not going to say anything about it right now. And good morning, Lark. And good morning, uh, Lark. How are you doing? Right. You're in, in that. <laughs> Hilarious. How are you doing, mate? Doing well. Doing well, Flame. How are you? Rendell, how are you? And the fourth movie we're going to talk about is Taxi Driver. Okay. And all four of them, fantastic movies. Um, one of them was... Well, we'll talk about it. We'll leave that alone. We'll we'll probably end up uh, by the time we wait until for everyone to roll in and uh, closing stuff. So we'll probably spend about twenty minutes on each one, right, on a two-hour live stream. Uncharted days. Hey, Chicho, thought I thought I was uh, going to miss this stream, but got work done early. Awesome, Uncharted days. I've been looking forward to this, right? Uh, it sort of kicked me back into watching movies. Because I've been going off on TV shows a lot, and it's I haven't been watching as many movies as I have in the past, and uh, this movie club thing sort of got me watching four movies in a matter of three weeks, really, and I haven't done that for a while, and it felt amazing, right, from one spectrum to the other, right? Let me take these posters down and let me give you guys my little intro. If you want to know who I am, what I'm doing, uh, what we're doing, really here, uh, I do have a Patreon page. I do share the content on patreon nikki how are you doing man the sound is effed up for me need to check uh, other streams hi all is the sound messed up for you it should be okay i checked it this morning i put headphones on this morning because i know a couple of streams ago cheryl how are you doing how are you doing and i'm uh, doing great my friend awesome awesome let me check this out how's the sound for everyone by the way gang is the sound okay test 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 oh i'm not plugged in <laughs> that's why i can't hear it on this sound good for me okay i'll sound good for you guys i unplugged the headphones i'm going what's going on i can't even hear it sound is good okay okay absurdicon how are you doing uh anakin seven thousand so i do share content on patreon if you want to support this work patreon is a fantastic way to support this project i don't put anything behind paywalls Share, share, like everything's Creative Commons. Okay, you can follow the work, and after you track this work for a while, and if you think this worth work is worth supporting by supporting this work through funds, Patreon is a fantastic way to do so. We are live streaming on Twitch. 
twitch.tv forward slash chicho C H Y C H O L I V E Chicho Live. Okay. If you want to participate in the chat while we're doing these live streams, why this is going on, Twitch is where you want to be at. Okay, gang. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Elo Minds VK Parlor Gap and Twitter for now. Chicho Diet Dog, how are you doing, hey, bud? <laughs> okay so if you want to follow the work uh see what else uh, we're sharing i do announce certain things and share pictures of garden or whatever on those platforms as well as a patreon of course so everything goes to patreon almost everything goes to patreon if i'm retweeting something or something on a specific platform i'm not sharing it on patreon i consider that sort of to be more on the noise level i'd like to keep the noise factor down a fair bit on our patreon page i want to make sure it's the meat of everything because i don't want to overwhelm people that uh, you know introduce more noise into people's lives i know people if you're supporting this work through patreon i know you know what this is all about and i very much appreciate it and i don't want to overwhelm you so if there's any recommendations all of you guys that are supporting through patreon uh you have you want me to do more i will okay uh just putting that out there we will be uploading the audio for this discussion i got my little palm mic set up here to soundcloud soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho and the audio should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify we just sort of set things up a couple of weeks ago to make that happen as well okay and we will be uploading this video to youtube and bitshoot okay and if you want to support this work through youtube and bitshoot uh, liking sharing and whatnot is a fantastic way to do so including commenting and if you're on youtube joining youtube membership is also a great way to support this project okay aside from that welcome welcome to a movie club live stream are you guys excited are you guys excited i i decided to finish the movies that i was watching with a bang so i watched there will be blood last night i wanted that to be in my mind i really love that movie by the way uh, uncharted days chicho how are we nominating this the next set of videos i was planning on doing it in this stream but there's no way we'll have time right so i set up another stream two days from now so tomorrow we're going to do a, uh, a relationship live stream i believe and on uh the next day monday we're doing uh ba -ba -ba -da 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 -da. no no sorry we've got three more streams coming up after this one we're doing a comic book reading tomorrow relationships monday and we're doing a movie stream recommendation again for the next set of videos on tuesday so that's when we're going to recommend more videos okay i hope everyone can make it uh absurdicon what are what are what all have we watched so far i watched all of them beside these four we are doing today i've only watched uh, these four videos in the last three weeks hello chicho great lasagna how are we doing can't wait to talk about my favorite movie 2001 okay gang should we start our discussion what movie should we talk about first great lasagna started it so should we open up the open up the floor talking about 2001 first right i think we should because great lasagna brought it up right good morning folks catholic traditionalists how are you doing i drink your milkshake <laughs> drainage drainage i love that movie i love that movie like i love that scene such a brilliant uh, but stellar scene i drink your milkshake i drink it right up <laughs> okay gang let's talk about 2001 everyone cool with that how we're about nine minutes in usually we wait about 10 minutes for people to roll in right i'm assuming notifications went out i'm not 100 sure if they did or not let me show you we'll wait a couple of moments let me show you what snacks i got i got apple and tahini with honey okay it's a really good snack by the way and tahini with either maple syrup or honey is fantastic okay really good really good i got uh crab apple liqueur salute and i got tea and water okay 
I haven't watched any been busy with work but I have watched taxi driver and there will be been a long time ago okay cool uncharted is so gang should we talk about 2001 should we talk about 2001 Bam. let's talk about this movie okay an epic drama of adventure and exploration in other words a complete mind f right what a movie now for me i'm just gonna give you my take on 2001 i've watched it i don't know how many times now i probably watched it from beginning to end twice only in one sitting it's this this time when i watched it i watched it's basically by the way it's got to be a given uh if we're doing this we're talking about discussion there are spoilers in this stream if you haven't watched these movies uh and if you don't want spoilers before you watch a movie don't listen to this video don't participate in this live stream until you watch the movies and if you're thinking about the live stream the video will be up on pitch shoot and youtube later so you got plenty of time to watch the movies okay major shark how are you doing shake oh i keep on forgetting is it shake or sharks shakes major shakes hope you're having a wonderful day much love shake shake nice nice shake thank you very much for popping in catholic tradition that lark and kuberg developed a book and the screenplay for 2001 jointly and about the same time very interesting writing approach it was phenomenal it's broken this movie is basically broken down into three segments right three uh, four segments right and it gets sort of trippier and trippier with each segment right so there's really four parts to 2001 that i could see and by the way 2001 a space odyssey is as far as i know about it, consider it is one of the most talked about movies ever right there are videos online analyzing 2001 from each panel from each motion dialogue and they analyze the movie for hours right so it's it's probably i don't know do you guys know this or not uh like does anyone know this is 2001 the most controversial most talked about movie in movie history absolute masterpiece 2001 space odyssey from the genius mind of stanley kubrick yeah a clockwork orange is another brilliant piece of work as well for sure stanley kubrick the only movie i i believe that i haven't seen from stanley kubrick is bart barton fink and i watched like 10 15 minutes of it i just wasn't in the mood to watch it uh, and i've never checked this out and i've never watched the shining from beginning to end right crazy i don't know why uh, clockwork orange was a revolution to me as a young teenager was it reckner eduardo i've been wanting to watch eyes wide eyes wide shut is brilliant it's very good i we all wonder what are the scenes that kubrick was not allowed or not able to put into the movie okay catholic traditions the movie was intended to provide the amazing visual aspects while the book went more into detail on the science and explained more deeply what was actually happening really catholic traditionalist i didn't know this and i've never read the 2001 book uh so i at some point i think i need to read that book uh it 2001 it's a ride really it's an amazing ride of human evolution and consciousness to a certain degree right and the the desire of humanity to explore in large part right and at two, by the way have you guys seen 2010 it should not have been made as far as i'm concerned i've only watched 2010 once and when i watched it when it first came out in the 1980s i was like mm, i don't know they shouldn't have made it right barton fink wasn't that directed by the coen brothers 
Oh, is it Barton Fink? Uh, oh, maybe Barton. I'm not thinking about Barton Fink. I'm thinking about me and names. Um, what's that piece that he did? Yeah, Barton Fink. I think it is the Coen Brothers. Um, what's that movie? It's not Barton Fink. Uh, Stanley. Man, me and getting the film i'm just checking it out uh film career film awards da, da, da. i'm thinking about uh barry linden i'm thinking about barry linden i haven't seen barry linden sorry gang i better get that name right barry linden i haven't seen okay i love eyes wide shut great performance from both tom uh, cruise and nicole kidman yeah 2010 was made too soon and go further uh, it's been 10 years since 2010. Yeah, it's been 10 years. clark wrote a third book 3001 the final odyssey as well well so was 2010 based on uh, the book uh, continuation of the book so there was 2001 book and then 2010 book and then 3001 the shining barry linden i haven't seen that as well cool sorry 3001 was the fourth book 2061 odyssey 3 was the third book wow 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 i didn't know this so there's four books in the series in the 2001 series and 2001 kicks it off catholic traditionalist so have you guys seen 2010 and how many thought it was a good movie and it was true to the original source yes four books in the space odyssey series have you read all four catholic traditionalists if so i'm really curious about 2010 if it's yeah if you say it's worth watching i will watch it since i just just watched 2010 uh 2001 uh so maybe with fresh eyes older eyes wiser eyes i'll have a different perspective on 2010. now nah, i really need to watch it 2010 it was a struggle but i haven't tried to watch it recently yeah cheryl neither have i never even really considered re-watching 2010. i've watched 2001 i don't know how many times again most of the times i fall asleep through the movie and i had to watch 2001 in three sittings i couldn't maybe because i was just doing so much uh that i was tired and uh, you know uh, sleepy and whatnot in 2001 the soundtrack for it absolutely brilliant just the noise yeah right just the build up it's just hypnotic absolutely brilliant a 2001 is an experience i wouldn't really call the movie i would call it a psychedelic experience personally i was not impressed with any um, with anyone other than 2001 really okay wait a second any other with any one other than 2001 so Catholic traditionalists there's only been 2001 2010 they haven't made the other two or shorts of them or anything have they Arthur Clark has other works that are much better than 2001 sequel oh you're talking about the books okay 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 i'm gonna be unpopular for this but i didn't like 2001 uh, elder god did you end up passing out through the movie i know i i had to do it in three sittings like it and again it's not a movie in terms of uh you know a hero's journey type of story movie i think 2001 to me is is an experience lark bark originally stanley kubrick was going to direct uh schindler's list but handed over to steven spielberg instead and the other film uh, ai oh the ai was going to be directed by stanley oh i would have loved to see that one stanley kubrick as well and uh the other film i was going to uh, going to be directed by sir kubrick but instead directed by uh steven spielberg and ai was going to be directed by stanley kubrick but instead directed 
uh, do the passing of Stanley Pro. I would have loved to have seen Stanley Kubrick's AI. Uh, Steven uh, Spielberg, I am not a fan of, just for the record, but we're talking about 2001. Luckily, I was able to watch it, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, Lark. Too, too many names in that statement. Yeah, too many. In that, my little <laughs> yeah, Lark was looping. <laughs> Sorry about the time with you, Joe. I tend to text fast. No worries, no worries. I tend to write i tend to write emails fast and then i tend to read slow sort of try to anyway uh, take it all in right as far as 2001 space odyssey okay what did you take away if you've seen it as the ending of the movie because i think 2010 tried to explain it but it wasn't to my satisfaction if i remember correctly so as the ending there's a lot of discussion and i've watched a video a long time ago analyzing 2001 talking about the birth and rebirth and death of representing humanity and consciousness and stuff like this it was very confusing it was very confusing that's why it's, i think it's one of the most talked about movies because there's so many people that have so many different interpretations of 2001 and there is a by the way there is a series someone did a series of uh interpreting 2001 and they put out like hours of video of 2001 it starts off at the beginning with the uh on earth with the uh, two tribes of uh they're not neanderthal but they're uh, what do you call it monkeys i guess but not monkeys of uh conflict and the appearance of the 2001 uh, sometimes called the first major sci-fi movie to deal with transhumanism really to deal with transhumanism i didn't know that and it blows me away that 2001 was made in 1968 the cinematography and the way they made it appear of the gravity shifting right absolutely brilliant brilliant oh my god i love space odyssey <laughs> mr top ramen yeah so good so good so it's the first sci-fi movie to deal with transhumanism why would they consider it transhumanism transhumanism to me is the merging of biology and technology but to me maybe that would be true if it was dealing with ai speci specifically in the third segment right with how even the video the meaning of 2001 didn't help it was too too hippie for me to understand the movie <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one, the meaning of 2001. I, I've just seen one video, segments of it, where it's a YouTuber just analyzing 2001 up, like just crazy, right? Stanley Kubrick, Lark, Stanley Kubrick originally was supposed to direct both Schindler. <laughs> Lark, I think we, we got the idea. That sums it up correctly. That sums it up correctly. So he was supposed to direct Schindler's List and AI. Catholic Church, transhumanism, the belief or theory that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations. So it doesn't necessarily have to be transhumanism, merging of technology and biology. That's one way. I never really thought about it that way. I always thought about transhumanism the merging of biology and technology so if you can go past beyond your current physical mental limitations so the use of entheogens could even be considered transhumanism if you're if you take it down that direction no hal was misunderstood hal just needed a, like hal just hal just needed reassurance that he was not going to be terminated okay cool I tend to be a perfectionist. No worries, Lark. Being a perfectionist is not a bad idea. Bowman's rebirth 
as the star child can be seen as such an evolution oh at the end at the end was it a re i guess it was a rebirth wasn't it i consider it the, the ending more of a death the this side of the cycle of life to a certain degree where there was an interaction and the alien entity wanted to make sure that is it bowman bowman uh, had a full uh, life experience i never really thought about it as a rebirth but i guess uh, it could be interesting 2001 was confusing as <laughs> like really i already surpassed trans i already surpassed transhumanism i take steroids to surpass my human form <laughs> you're amplifying your human form when you're taking steroids you don't surpass it Which, which is better 2001 space odyssey or blade runner uh, i don't think you can make that comparison they're totally two different movies uh i think they're totally two different movies 2001 space odyssey is has only one little segment in it with an ai that isn't uh an android right it's a program specifically could hal be considered the ego could Hal be considered the ego? Human human ego, possibly. Because they're they they're all shocked that I forget what the what level of it, uh, technology it was, what they refer to them. That version of computers, right? That generation of computer had never ever made a mistake. So there was a discrep discrepancy between what Hal did and what the earth uh sister tech was stating right which was stating that hal had made a mistake and obviously hal had made a mistake right <laughs> you're halfway there <laughs> to mr top robin funny 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 it it, it it, 2001 is a love and hate thing i think you either end up loving it or you end up just hating it for the fact that it's l looked upon so highly i think cheryl beyond appreciating the role of sound soundtrack and the hal ibm tie i still can't get excited about 2001 the hal as frankenstein's monster uh, allegory is kind of neat too but feels like a stretch given the other elements of the movie cool right well said to George Lark computers don't make mistakes the programmer did see here's the kicker it can't be the program it had to be the computer so Hal had to be an AI because the same program in on earth that same uh, generation of tech was saying that there was no error in the equipment right so there was a discrepancy between the two programs that means there had to be something else that was in there if they were identical programs if they were identical programs then they would give the same result right unless there was catastrophic failure and that's what uh, the astronaut was checking they were trying to find out if there was catastrophic failure or not right so they had to shut him down but hal did not agree catherine says hal was programmed to deceive uh paul and bowman this uh this intention this is intention with hal's perfection is what caused the breakdown ah true 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 because there was a secondary code on there saying that hal had certain amount of information about the uh, their mission that was not conveyed to the astronauts so hal's mission superseded the astronauts mission and i guess that same program uh, 
module was not loaded on the program on earth so that could have been given the discrepancy between them so Hal was trying to deceive them yeah okay Catholic traditionalist that's right that's right so he, he the as far as Hal was concerned he was running the mission and the astronauts obviously agreed on that he was the key element in that mission but the astronauts had not realized that according to Hal they were disposable okay a lot of people complained that 2001 space Odyssey was too long for a film uh, no I did yeah I know a lot of people complain about it because they pass out during a movie which I tend to do but the first couple of times I watched it I didn't pass out can you summarize the movie for those who haven't seen it oh, <laughs> Anakin 7000 you got a few hours it basically starts off with human beings on earth uh, evolving from monkeys basically with an alien species encountering them coming to them and them developing tools and using tools and then it just goes straight into space right the football team i grew up rooting for they run out of on the on the field to 2001 space odyssey saying haha it is so freaking amazing awesome awesome big c chicho are you interested in dangerous uh, are you interested in dangerous AI in media? I recommend the movie Demon Seed. Oh, I've heard about that movie. Probably the second best AI flick. Oh, really? Link it up in our Discord, uh, Big C. Uh, better yet, show up on Tuesday and recommend it in our movie club. Computers can't lie. Uh, was it an outside influence? Ah, uh, it was a module that was there. So, my curiosity is why did hal say that instrument had a error so was the module uh, creating problems in hal's programming that was causing it to detect an error in the equipment or why why did hal say there was an error that one of the instruments was going to malfunction which i don't mind long films no patrick it's a tone poem by strauss called also uh sprach uh zarathustra is it sprach zarathustra op30 padre the song just builds and builds until the end when they run out the energy in the stadium gets absolutely electric always my favorite part of the game nice <laughs> even before the game starts is your favorite part of the game the energy must be amazing eh? yeah 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 the soundtrack for 2001 is absolutely brilliant the soundtrack to 2001 is at par with the soundtrack as there will be blood the soundtrack for there will be blood is one of the most amazing soundtracks ever ever what's up dude i feel so uh re relived i'm returning my lease car now i don't have to worry about payments nice femto nice freedom freedom extra funds <sighs> fantastic chicho what remedies should i use for bad headache uh first of all drink water a lot of people get a lot of headache because they're dehydrated okay so if just drinking water and let the water go through you a little bit right so drink water give it about half an hour see if your headache eases if not it's muscles try massaging yourself the back of the back of the head those are the two that i would recommend i kept checking in and out whilst i watched it i love the intro though yeah the intro was amazing and elder god yeah i i watched it in three sittings man sure which was in turn inspired by nietzsche's thus spoke zarathustra nice catholic traditionalist so the soundtrack was inspired by is a is a poem by strauss which was inspired by thus spoke zarathustra man no wonder people analyze uh 2001 to down to the minutes yeah it got me interested in reading nietzsche cool 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 very cool very cool so 
in terms of let's do a rating on this thing in terms of the four movies we watched how many people consider 2001 to be their favorite elder god is <laughs> on the side of his, his least, least favorite for me it would be my second favorite my favorite is uh there will be blood tahini and maple syrup and apple is it going to focus there you go nice very delicious last of the four we do last of the four elder god lisa I added honey, lots of honey. Honey and apple is really good, All right? Honey and apple is fantastic. So I made this one. Uh, um, I added a fair bit of honey to it. Ooh, don't want it to fall on the keyboard. Come on. And with maple syrup, it becomes thinner, of course, right? I give it two thumbs up. <laughs> Terminator in space, funny. Gang, should we move on to the next movie? Any last words regarding 2001? So according to Catholic traditionalists, well, the book 2001 is fantastic. The other ones were not uh, as good. And you guys have actually piqued my interest to watch 2010 again. Taxi driver, let's talk about taxi driver. 2001 has exactly one joke in it. Does it have a joke? What's the joke? Graham, before we move on, what's the joke in 2001? What was the joke in 2001? I can't remember a joke in 2001. When he's trying to figure out how to use the bathroom. Ah, ha, 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 that's right, that's right. When he's standing there reading this huge instructions of how to use the bathroom. Was that a joke though? Or was that just the science of it? Should we go to taxi driver? Let's do taxi driver. We're taking down 2001. It's meant to be humorous. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick's humorous. I guess it was considering the rest of the movie, right? Our oh, three shells jokes. Ah, uh, three shells joke. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Taxi driver. Another extraordinary piece of work. Let's do it. Gang, taxi driver. Taxi driver. What a movie what a movie there's so much in it right demolition man was anyone here able to see taxi driver in theater when it came out did i see it in theaters i can't remember when it came out no it came out in 1975 so i didn't see it in the theater i think it came out in 1975 are you talking to me are you talking to me <laughs> awesome robert de niro in his best really uh too bad uh very unfortunate what he has become right taxi driver and there will be blood two of the most uplifting feel good <laughs> hit films of all time <laughs> maple vine and vine <laughs> taxi driver is just phenomenal 1976 it came out okay cool cool <laughs> funny that was three yeah i didn't see I saw um, Apocalypse Now in the theaters. Wow, what an experience. But that's for another day. So Taxi Driver, what are your takes on Taxi Driver? Is it about uh, reaching the brink of insanity and coming back? Is it about trying to find purpose in life? 
Is it a political statement? For sure it is to a certain degree. Is it a social statement? For sure. Is it a just a human statement? Is it about relationships, pushing the boundaries a little bit too far, making sure that uh, you do not make people feel uncomfortable to a level where they fear you, right? Or fear the situation? Because there was that situation as well in Taxi Driver where Robert De Niro takes uh, the, I forget her name, the actress name or the character's name, when he takes her to the movie theater, movie theater, right? He crossed the boundary, right? And he wasn't aware of the feelings of the person he was interacting with, which is something that we see huge problems with in our society. Uh, where people cross the line sometimes intentionally sometimes unintentionally where they don't have the other people's feelings emotions uh, or they're not considering it right how their behavior is gonna uh, make the other feel right Eduardo oh my god watching apocalypse now in the theater must have been amazing it's one of my favorite Eduardo I got a story to tell about apocalypse now and being able to watch it in the theater but we'll leave that alone for another time absurdicon i'm very curious how it felt in the 70s when it came out the main character was probably a hor horrifying new concept at the time while today the main character is someone who is much more common mm -hmm. absurdicon would, it, would he have been a horrifying character i don't know i don't think so a look at uh, dog day afternoon Dog Day Afternoon by Al Pacino came out in 1960s, right? And it's got a lot of similarities between Taxi Driver and Dog Day Afternoon, by the way, gang, is an amazing movie as well, right? Spider-Man, how are you doing? Hey, I'm here. I just have to lurk because I'm packing. Spider-Man, brother, take care of your move. You're doing a move in two weeks. We're happy to entertain you. Have, have the stream going uh to keep you occupied keep it fun the packing anyway that a cinematography especially at the beginning is very cool long shots long shots beautiful shots right and that scene in the hallway with taxi driver has been mimicked multiple times in multiple action movie oh betsy that's right that's the girl's name thanks cheryl lark oh my god there's so many skeptics and uh, analysis on taxi driver uh yeah yeah i don't think this meant much as 2001 but there's a lot of them right social alienation and the consequences is clearly a primary theme in taxi driver i think it's all there's a catholic tradition so i agree 100 percent. and there is also the brink of madness right this person came out of the military when he went into the military he was broken and then came out of the military and he didn't know how to interact with society right he he started seeing everyone as the enemy right and he just needed to take out one enemy to feel sane again shepherd that's right i think i think it's not sir, sir it's shepherd something shepherd I forget her name Sybil Shepherd that's right Sybil Shepherd Sybil Shepherd damn beat me to it uh -huh. oh, I got kicked off all the way to the top pooper scooper please Betsy in taxi driver yeah uh, maple violent fine yeah for sure Catholic traditionalists the contradiction between the isolation and life in the big city yeah huge huge catholic traditions how are you i don't feel like i've uh, seen you while civil shepherd attica 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 and that's uh from dog day afternoon what a movie what a movie taxi driver almost killed the president yeah he needed he needed to find an enemy and take somebody out right why not someone that was challenging his existence really um, or con showing the contradictions crazy busy lady ta -ta -ta. 
yes taxi driver has dynamic cinematography uh grab chicho i don't know if you guys talked about it but i missed the 2001 discussion so i'm gonna link a video in film about the scene in 2001 with the russian scientist okay for sure graham that'd be awesome actually that'd be awesome absurdicon chicho i'm not familiar with dog day afternoon to me watching taxi driver was like looking into the life of an incal uh, which became much more widely known in recent years um what i call i don't know sort of con maybe I, i'm not i don't like the term i don't i don't even know how to use it incal incel i really don't like it because it's putting people in a box right i think there's a lot of mental issues associated with being isolated being uh, shunned uh, not understood with by society because everybody's busy right to a certain degree oh that's right out of love for jody foster too yeah jody foster fantastic fantastic male masculinity versus feminine for me elder god says with a touch of insanity male masculinity versus feminine feminism for me with a touch of insanity cool cool padre i think a theme that struck with me is that all these characters try to reach reach each other but just cannot relate at all almost every conversation between all the characters all of them trying to connect but all of them failing to break through uh to one another yeah yeah there was a lot of that and there was a lot of everybody's bubble right this person was talking about this but they were looking at it from their own perspective like when they're in the diner where one of the other taxi driver gets up and says oh take a look at this this is a uh, tile something of this actor famous person and it's it's over here and he offers us to robert De Niro and says hey if you sell this you can keep half of it and give half to me and robert De Niro is like what what in the world are you talking about like this is like so alien to him that is like the the his politest reply was uh i'm not interested right because it's just not at all what the world he lives in right so that's a great uh as maple valentine says great point positive great point the only person really was the taxi driver that was uh doing it for 20 years and everyone kept on the one who kept on telling stories and people listened to him and robert de niro pulled him out and said you know i want to talk to you and that person was aware that's the only moment really that you see uh well there's a couple other moments as well with uh, the interaction between robert de niro and jody foster where they understand each other but one of the first ones was the the older taxi driver when robert de niro is you can tell he's in distress he's he's about to lose it and the guy all he says he starts talking at random <laughs> just to calm him down and it works because at the end robert de niro says i really don't know what you're talking about uh, but thank you and that distress level is gone from him especially when he came out of the the cafe where he looks at that um the black guy that had come out with the hat and he looks at him like that was a brilliant scene by the way what a scene robert de niro just standing there eyeing the guy down right and the other place would be obviously robert de niro and betsy civil uh shepherd right where robert de niro they're having a good time but their conversation is not linked to each other civil shepherd is just to her robert de niro is an unknown and robert de niro is just loving the interaction because he's he can finally talk to someone openly without being judged right in a kind way but robert de niro they they don't really understand each other because he takes Sybil Shepherd to a movie, right? And Sybil Shepherd was willing to go for the ride because he, she found it interesting. But Robert De Niro really crossed the line, right? Even because he didn't really understand that he crossed the line, he thought this was normal because he'd seen couples there, right? 
Catholic tradition as Padre agreed people are everywhere and yet so many isolated from one another Padre the older taxi driver gives him great advice but our main character just is totally living in another reality yeah Cheryl I think he only wanted to assassinate the candidate in revenge for uh, Betsy um, spurring his advances advances upon advances upon advances the quantity of returned flowers uh, stashed in his apartment gave him gave me anxiety to be honest yet when we when he burns the flowers before heading out to the rally it indicates a turn did anyone else catch the fresh flowers in the background of that scene maybe indicating a new mission to save iris oh i didn't catch that cheryl there was a part where it was a little disturbing where you saw the flowers on the ground where the camera is panning the flowers on the ground and it shows the bed frame and sounds and then it cuts to another scene and then i think after that comes where he's cut his mohawk goes to the rally and stuff like that uh, so that part was disturbing but i didn't catch the the next mission with iris oh man now i gotta watch it again or try to track down that scene and for sure his was just revenge just to prove to betsy that he was a man and he could he could be as great as the candidate right as important as that person maple violent thrine to me it's interesting that throughout the film travis directs his anger at all the wrong things race women sexuality etc he finally directs his anger towards someone who's actually in charge of the reins of power but he does so without any analytical understanding of that so it's just a sort of nihilism instead of righteousness is that the way you took it as nihilism i think what the, the way i took it was he directed his anger to someone he understood right because his anger towards everybody else well when he was driving when the the candidate first gets into his taxi and he says oh you have any recommendations and he goes just it's a cesspool get rid of he doesn't understand any of this right but then when he has a conversation with the pimp and he, he did a great job the actor with the pimp he understood him so he could direct his anger towards him he understood that that was a vile creature there was no doubt in his mind right so i didn't see him as nihilism i did see the righteousness though he was trying to be righteous he was sincerely trying to be a good human being right oh chat kicked me up again let's see absurdicon absurdicon chicho he was extremely misunderstood but the things he says on his date with betsy are just creepy that entire relationship between them was extremely uncomfortable indeed right travis was clearly an unstable person and instead of seeking help he snaps in the worst ways possible he's not a good guy or a hero at all he's an anti-hero uh the way i see it or at the end he becomes the anti-hero i think he, he he's going through insanity but i think taxi driver to me is the birth of the anti-hero right he may be a product of what's happened to him but that doesn't excuse his behavior uh to a certain degree of certicon i agree he when he when civil shepherd cuts it he needs to back away step away when he comes out of the theater grabs civil shepherd's arm that to me became extremely disturbing right so his conversation between betsy and uh, robert de niro was a little uncomfortable because they really weren't talking about the same thing but it was going back and forward so there the line hadn't been crossed yet for me the line was crossed when civil shepherd runs out of the movie theater and robert de niro comes and grabs her arm right there 
that is one of the most uncomfortable moments in the movie and then it builds from there right when he goes into his her work and curses her and stuff like that and it becomes very uncomfortable for sure danger sometimes i wonder will god ever forgive us for what we have done to each other then i look around and i realize god left this place a long time ago we talking taxi driver <laughs> yeah I'm talking taxi driver what's going on that's that that looks like something i think that could be a script from taxi driver robert de niro saying it harvey keitel was the pimp harvey keitel fantastic right catholic tradition is to maple violent thrine good point his rescue of iris can be seen as a form of redemption if so though it is a very imperfect form since he was motivated by sense of desperate anger and frustration as much as any scene of nobility also notice his eyes in the mirror of the cab at the end it seems clear that the rage and perhaps madness is still there waiting to reemerge. really catholic traditions i took that the ending to be the rage the rage is gone right and i think the rage disappeared from him when he tried to blow his own head off at the scene at, when he rescues iris to me the ending of the insanity was him going like this and he finally when the cops come he just goes like this with his finger to me that was the end of his insanity and that was a rebirth to me of the more calm taxi driver that he's he he's living his life in a sense that he's accomplished something meaningful right because he had the f the letter framed on his wall so to me that was the rage from him was gone at the end that's the sense i got lark bark the scene and i don't know if anyone remembers but where martin scorsese character sits in the back seat talking to travis uh, bickle suppose uh, a travis bickle is having a conversation with himself in that scene is that the the husband that's staking out the wife that's talking about the magnum assuming that it's not a dream scene supposedly ah yeah it was cool to see harvey kaitel as a pimp yeah and martin scorsese and robert de niro and uh, harvey cartel have worked a lot together travis seems to me to be desperately searching for a meaningful life so in a way opposite to nihilism attitude i agree i agree with tab i don't consider him nihilist at all i think he's trying to find meaning he's trying to do good but he just doesn't know how right it's like it's like those who have never had uh, proper parenting don't know how to be a parent right travis becker getting aggressive by grabbing betsy oh okay okay that part yeah i agree with that i guess my reading is just that he constantly misses the mark in what is causing the uh, immersion and isolation that the social order creates for sure he is confused he's one confused sob right constantly towards specific problems instead of um, indicating the social order as a whole yeah correct chicho deep fried belly pork thank you for the twitch prime sub have you already talked about two? we already deep fried uh, belly pork we already talked about 2001 it was the first one we talked about <laughs> but you can drop things about 2001 if you want to if you want to bring it up right but the focus will be taxi driver and then the next ones but we can definitely you know any of the movies is okay to drop comments on he was able to process all of his trauma by rescuing Jody and killing the pimp. After that, uh, after that, it just does seem the world does not seem to bug him as much anymore. That's the way I see it as well, Padre. I think he killed his anger by almost killing himself. Right? Ch -ch -ch. 
Ch-ch-ch-ch. That husband scene, Travis Becker is having a conversation with himself while nobody's sitting in the back seat. Ch-ch-ch-ch. Oh God, I can't remember it now. I can't remember it now. Chicho, I agree with you. He's very much an anti-hero and he's fallen into insanity. But I don't know if I agree with you saying he's magically cured after his attempt at suicide. To me, at the end, it looks more like Travis is in a coma and his brain is fantasizing about being hailed a hero for killing those pimps. He was a vigilante. Indeed, there was no reason for him to be hailed a hero and there was no reason for Betsy to come visit him after the way he treated her. Uh, here's the thing with Betsy. Uh, Betsy's character was attracted with power to power right to to a certain degree I'm, I'm calling it power but there's a certain um, character that was there that was existent between uh, De Niro and the person that was running for president right they had a mission right they had a cause and they were willing to sacrifice everything for it right so uh, I think Betsy played true to the to the role uh, I think it was written very well where she comes and visits him because she's interested in experiences and now she understood that De Niro was not an evil person was not a threat is was not uh, at the time he was but she saw him in a different light as a savior right that's the way I see it. I'm sort of going to agree. He's dreaming. He's dreaming. Man, I wish I knew which part of the which part of the movie that is. I need to uh, rewatch that scene again. Where where when it occurs. Padre. He even gives Betsy a ride and she no longer has any power over him anymore. <coughs> whereas before she kind of had control over him he broke the spell she had over him yeah i agree roxa and i think it was him releasing his insanity his confusion about humanity really cheryl i was also irritated that scorsese ended with betsy dream or no elder god uh, seeking out the hero it felt like a reinforcement or acknowledgement of righteousness <clears throat> in his treatment of Betsy et al. Ah, so you talk, you guys are talking about the last bit with Betsy being a dream, really? Padre, I think it kind of has that coma feel to it because, in a way, the old Beckel has died and now he's someone else. In a, in a way, he's living in the afterlife. Have you or will you be discussing? Oh, discuss Bad Lieutenant. If we watch Bad Lieutenant, we will definitely discuss Bad Lieutenant. And what a fantastic movie at par with taxi driver and uh, the professional leon bad lieutenant is so good so dark so beautiful right absurdicon chicho that's an interesting take on betsy and it's supposed to be why she she isn't interested in that guy that works at the political movement agreed right he he's at the same level as she is so she's not interested in that right they're just friends i haven't seen taxi driver on top of my list though oh you gotta see taxi driver watch it it's pretty good very good rucksack <clears throat> elega cheryl he only sees her in the mirror never da, 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 never directly i think she would never see him again after their earlier events 
So you think that was a whole dream sequence, Elder God? Really? No, but when she gets out of the taxi, he sees her. So it's not only in the mirror. She gets out and says, how much? And he just smiles and drives away. So I don't think that was a dream sequence. You guys think that was a dream sequence? I didn't take it like that at all. I kept on hearing about that too, that Betsy was a dream. Wow. One would hope, but the reinforcement is there nonetheless. I, if it was a dream sequence, I wish they made it a little bit more clear. I wish they didn't show her getting out of the car, standing beside him. I wish they showed it just from the back. How much is that? And then him smiling and then her getting out. Lark. Oh, my God. Bad Lieutenant starving, uh, starring Ivy Keitel and directed by uh, Abel Ferreira. Leon. Leon, my favorite film, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, for sure. And yes, I love Leon, the professional. Gary Oldman is an outstanding actor and uh, directed by Luke Benson. Luke Benson, Absurdicon, Chicho. The main reason I think Travis is in a coma at the end is because he gets shot in the neck during his raid on the pimps. This seems like it would be really hard um, injury to walk away from and it definitely seems like it could put Travis in a coma well he was in a coma but he came out so there was newsprint so you think that whole ending is a dream sequence I didn't take it like that at all but he didn't get shot that he got shot in the neck but you could see the bullet it was opened the wound was open so the bullet didn't go through it got stuck uh, what do you call it? Uh, not ricocheted, but cut him, right? That's the way I saw it. Gary Oldman constantly pushed character creative. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was a dream sequence. I think it was just closure. I think it was just closure. That's the way I see it. Catholic traditionalist for what it's worth. Paul, uh, um, Schrader, the screenwriter, has stated that he intended the end of the movie to represent somewhat of a loop back to the beginning with Travis Travis's rage building anew. Ah, as with all art, though, the viewer can and should seek meaning beyond that which was directly intended by the artist. As a big believer in the importance of redemption, I quite like interp uh, interpretations that see a happier ending, such as it such as it is, than the one I interpreted. Wow. Okay, Catholic tradition. I didn't know that. And there's a thing that maybe Robert De Niro acted in a way to give it closure. He didn't act in a way to show the rage because I really didn't see the rage at the end. I'm, I'm gonna watch the ending again just to see if I pick up on anything else. Catholic traditionalist, the epilogue is not a dream sequence. It's just a restarting of the movie. Okay, cool. So it's a loop, you're saying. I've always felt that the last frame could be spliced to the first frame and the movie started all over again. Paul Schrader. Oh, so that's what he said. Man, now I got to watch the ending in the beginning of Taxi Driver because it starts off with him driving the sequences, right? I just noticed movies use a lot of milk references in the movies. <laughs> there will be blood. Pass through though and though. What is your view of the film Ninth Gate? Ninth Gate, Ninth Gate, Ninth Gate. Uh, I've seen it. I just can't remember which one it is. That's the horror one. I, I got a. I, I need a refresher of which one that is. On popular opinion, I thought Joker was better than Taxi Driver. No, I, I disagree, Padre. I like the Joker, but I think Taxi Driver had something else. And even if even if they were at par, Taxi Driver, in my opinion, would supersede uh, Joker because Taxi Driver came first by three decades, four decades, four four and a half decades. 
Sure, I definitely had to process how my perceptions and emotions changed from when I first watched this in my early 20s until now, especially tied to Betsy again, Iris's rate, Iris's age, and issues associated with PTSD, particularly how Vietnam era veterans were were not supported um, appropriately. Excellent movie, but whew, lost to process, lost to process. I agree. Then the relationship between Betsy and uh, De Niro that had you at at the edge, right? Really uncomfortable when he goes in and just lets it loose on Betsy. Just imagine how many people in real life, right? Women in real life had have, have experienced that right and how we see that in the movie as the man doing this and how insane that man looked and how vulnerable betsy looked right and just imagine if this situation had occurred somewhere where there's no one else around how far would have that gone right that's one of the main takeaways i think we should have from this movie as well that we should not cross that type of boundary specifically as a male ever ever right those eyes were mad at the as at, at the end ah, absurdicon chicho i took that whole ending as a dream sequence it simply seemed to be too good for the reality that the rest of the movie ga gives us it's extremely dark and it's showing travis's descent into madness and reminds us multiple times that travis is not a good guy why would travis then be rewarded with a happy ending uh, i i have a i have a friend that has quoted this before multiple times and it took me a while to process when i first heard it good things happen to bad people right good things happen to bad people now i disagree that travis was you're, you're saying travis is not a good guy i agree with that but i don't think travis was a bad guy Travis was insane, okay, and that was a product of our society, right? Especially coming out of because we don't know at the, at the beginning when he goes to uh, apply for the taxi uh, job, right? Where the guy is sitting, oh, uh, he says I'm a marine and tax the the guy, the dispatch guy, not the dispatch guy, but the manager guy says, oh, I was a marine too. And he tries to get a little bit of info out of Robert De Niro, but Robert De Niro just brushes it off. So we don't know what took place, right? They don't try to justify who Travis is uh, based on his history. So um, there's a lot of unknowns there. Any guys, if you don't already know, don't follow women. Cheryl, well put. Any guys, if you don't already know, don't follow women don't stake out women and don't really track anyone that is ending a relationship with you may it be male or female by the way and this goes both ways there are women who also stalk men right but it's not as threatening as men stalking women right never ever 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 go there unless you want to be considered insane okay that's a very interesting way to look at it, uh, Padre says, regarding Catholic traditions. Night gain is Roman, Pulas Roman Polanski about. I would have to look it up, uh, deep fried belly pork. <laughs> right. I'm going to scroll down, gang, because we got to move on to the next movie. We need, we need enough time to talk about these things. Another interesting thing I noticed as the movie goes on, Travis's hair gets shorter and shorter till he shaves it into a mohawk for his assassination attempt. Ah, I think a mark on the good work of art multiple times. Da -da 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 -da. Milk makes you badass. Lark. Well, according to the director, Travis survived the shooting shootout, and chances are good he's going to erupt again. In the last second of the film, Travis looks into his rear view mirror and sees his old 
own wild eyes looking back oh i gotta look that again we get one last glimpse of his insanity churning under the surface and there's suddenly a harsh strange note on the soundtrack as travis adjusts his mirror and looks away from his reflection according to scorsese quote i decided i put something on that show that the timer in travis starts to tick again the bomb that's about to explode again end quote wow wow do you think the COVID thing <laughs> yeah we're not gonna uh nice um mira we talk about the stuff in other streams gang let's move on to a lighter movie in bruges let's go to in bruges lighter compared to taxi driver lighter it is a lighter that soundtrack by bernard herman oh we got a fly kicking around hello friends envious how are you doing hello chicho how are you doing good envious welcome welcome lots of love lots of love okay no problem in bruges yay in bruges what a great movie what a great movie and it is a feel-good movie it is a feel-good movie right in a weird kind of way in a weird kind of way in bruges is an analogy for christianity no is it i don't know i didn't take it that way at all i know this movie nice a lighter movie no <laughs> if you consider assassins and kid being killed in the crossfire lightest movie of the ones you have here seriously <laughs> much love much love nice by the way uh nice uh if you if you want to go to my youtube channel i have a whole playlist on what you asked about okay and after that those videos we didn't load on the last one we didn't load anymore on youtube they're on bitshoot okay because of censorship laugh out loud in bruges is funny and good also a dark comedy as well dark comedy dark comedy and very uh very spiritual movie where it shows us that one mistake of the choices we make in life that take us to right one mistake could be the death of us right that we cannot reconcile in our minds of what took place right yeah who does not like bruce in winter <laughs> funny <laughs> roman catholicism was well represented really what was catholic traditions think about this envious oh i just saw the other movies you talked about in the title interesting selection of movies i must rewatch the rest yeah yeah they're all four of them were phenomenal movies uh, brandon gleason was brilliant in the movie which movie are we at we're in this one in bruges sorry for the cast no worries no worries crafter this one we've already talked about 2001 and taxi driver and we're talking about in bruges i've subscribed to your youtube we will talk later okay nice nice and by the way all the discussion of what you asked about when we do live streams they will be loaded on bitshoot only so if you want to follow uncensored chicho bitshoot is where you want to be at because everything that gets loaded on youtube gets loaded on bitshoot technical difficulties permitting and almost everything is now bitshoot is getting more funding it's more stable it's it's growing like mad so i doubt if there will be uh the technical difficulty is going to reduce right so everything that we load on youtube will be loaded on bitshoot plus more is going to be loaded on bitshoot okay just letting you know uh, my my go to our discord page and link it up there we have a we have a folder for what you want to talk about okay in bruges gang what a movie and what an amazing person this guy in the doop, this guy was right the main character right an assassin with a conscience that in his first appearance made a mistake that ended his life right 
even at the end he was trying to save the life of the person that killed him and by the way i'll ask this because it's still up in the air since we talked about the ending of taxi driver does he die at the end i my take is yes because he says i tried to stay alive and stuff like this bruges was basically predatory for the young assassin predatory for the young assassin absolutely great actor performance for sure great performance wow 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 played by the talented underrated colin farrell indeed one of the phenomenal actor phenomenal actor purgatory i was reading that predatory Burgess was basically purgatory for the young assassin yeah yeah that's a good way of looking at it elder god so where did he transcend did he go into heaven or hell <clears throat> it feels like carl farrell really liked the role movie yeah he often plays very bad but in this movie he is so i does he play really bad i don't know everything i've seen of call colin farrell he's been awesome like uh i believe Colin farrell played the bullseye in the daredevil movie the daredevil movie sucked right with uh what's his name the dingling <laughs> i forget his name but i believe Colin farrell was uh uh he played bullseye ben affleck yeah yeah ben affleck uh not good colin farrell daredevil fantastic right <clears throat> did he die i'm assuming he died elder god very bad movie his last statement was past tense his last statement was past tense so i was assuming he died daredevil uh netflix series phenomenal cornfell blah 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 i still think that uh brendan gleason was a standout actor in the movie <laughs> he was he was phenomenal such a loving character and a cold-hearted murderer right that felt it was just a job right apart from the accidents and the wells uh there wasn't much blood and there will be blood oh nice there was there was lots of it lots of it there will be blood is the closing statement of the movie with the final scene we'll talk about that later but i'll say it now where daniel day lewis turns around and chalantly says i'm finished <laughs> and the music kicks in Ta -da! catholic traditionalist cheryl catholic traditionalist yes he was my favorite for the character my favorite for the character is when he thought to drop the coin to clear the path before the big splat yeah and here's the thing cheryl when he dropped the coin i was like oh he's clearing the path but i think that was sort of to a certain degree a mistake on his part as well sort of reflecting his life right because what if people were went to pick up the coins right he dropped them and then there was a pause and what if some people went to pick up the stuff right i sort of took it a little too far i think his intention was there but it was a mistake as well to a certain degree maybe he should have dropped his gun something else bruges is one of the most catholic places in europe is it elder god i didn't know that the score was amazing really how i don't think that that is true is it i i haven't been uh, to bruges so i don't know catholic traditionalist uh, to chicho and cheryl exactly the tension between his character as a killer and his character as a kind caring individual interested in redemption was wonderfully portrayed wonderfully portrayed what like really it, all the characters were endearing including the little little guy right the american <laughs> dwarf midget as Colin Farrell refers to him right the little people 
right? The little man. Even he, even the prostitutes were endearing. It was incredible. Even the their boss had a sense of uh, honor to him, right? His code. There's a lot of Catholic places in Europe. Chicho, I don't think that it is. Yeah, I don't know, Bruce. Elder God, stop telling us lies. <laughs> but there was a, by the way, in the movie, it shows it very Catholic stuff. They go to all these Catholic buildings and they see some of the brutality of the depiction of the church and the tortures and and the and the murals are supposed to be representation of the redemption of the church trying to reveal what was what was done and whatnot so there was a there was a serious overtone of catholicism i don't know if it's catholicism but religion christianity on there right so i think that's w one thing that uh, elder god what he said rings true i put out a beach umbrella here because i knew the sun was going to shine shine but i should have put the beach umbrella on this side <laughs> to reduce the sunshine i hope the brightness of chicho is not bugging you guys gang i also wonder about the tie to putting coins in the box before lighting a candle but again oh, that could be a stretch donation giving a coin to light a candle possibly yeah, I like to certain movies share all with you. I like to try to connect as much as possible, if if possible, right? Obviously, us human beings are pattern recognition machines, so we go a little bit too far, right? Just a little bit too far. Are you talking to me? There's a Vatican, Italy, Spain, and Poland. Yeah, and Poland is very, very uh, Catholic architecture yeah they and in the movie they do show that a lot of architecture and the murals and stuff ralph finney is also a great actor phenomenal he did such an amazing job such an amazing job it's gothic neo-gothic do you have a motorbike no by the way for the people who like movie soundtracks the one from in bruges is definitely a good one to listen to yeah. all these four movies had amazing soundtracks by the way amazing i think that's has to be a must for a movie to be amazing that if it doesn't if uh, there's movies you watch where the soundtrack is just just doesn't go with the movie it just takes away from the movie i have a student that says with the star wars movies even when they're walking it's dramatic music it's ridiculous right they visit an art gallery with three paintings of people being punished for their sins. Yeah. And that was a brilliant scene, by the way, where they're showing the murals, the paintings. It's just like, whoa. Cheryl Lark. More than once, he looked way too much like uh, Voldemort. I couldn't get past it. I didn't, uh, I didn't help having Brandon Gleeson and Clemens Posey as a major character. I think in Bruges, uh, you can always watch while taxi driver needs a lot more of attention. Yeah. In Bruges is something you could watch uh, as a group, right? You can have popcorn and talk and stuff like this. Taxi driver, not the same. Not the same. And then when Space Odyssey comes, that requires even more from the viewer so much more envious chicho absolutely i love listening to movie soundtracks absolutely catholic tradition is interesting the coins that gleason dropped from the top of the tower were likely the same coins that he attempted and failed that's right failed to use to buy admission to the tower earlier in the movie i didn't make that connection catholic traditions indeed Ah, excellent, 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 envious. It adds so much to the movie, so much to the movie soundtrack. Was there? On? You should do a discussion stream on uh, Guillermo del Toro films. 
Pan's Lam Lambreth is one of my favorite. Uh, Ducky MC Quacks. On Tuesday, we're going to do a movie stream where we make movie recommendations and we're going to vote on them to see what the next three movies or four movies are going to be that we're going to watch that we're going to discuss in future stream. Okay. Another round of movies after this? Yeah, Padre on Tuesday. We pick more movies and we'll list them. Okay. So we're doing two movie club streams in this set today and on Tuesday. We do more. Harry Potter, Paz Lambert. Great movie, by the way, Paz Lambert. The Devil's, Devil's Backbone and Shape of Water would be a cool discussion, indeed. Maybe we should uh, watch some Italian horror if we want to continue the soundtrack of Italian movies or Italian westerns, spaghetti westerns. Fantastic soundtracks, right? I could watch Pan's Lamroth again. Special movie, special movie. It's truly good. A lot of votes for Pan's Lamroth. Hellboy, too, is honestly one of my favorites from uh, Del Toro. Wow. He did a fantastic job. Yeah, Hellboy 2 gets too much hate in my opinion. I love the owls. Okay, okay. I was okay with it. But I have to watch it again, maybe. I am surprised the Devil's Backbone is not more well known. Very interesting movie. Cool, cool, cool. I love that fat American scene. I actually pissed my mask. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Where you can't go up there? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> such a good scene such a good scene makes him so human right so honest so endearing next time i hope i'll know the movies before the stream to really participate i watched in bruges but that's long ago uh, envious we have our stuff we list them right so hellboy 2 was decent only del toro film i don't really like in uh, crimson peak I love Italian spaghetti. Gang, should we go to the next movie? Let's go to the next movie. Let's go to the next movie. There will be blood. There will be blood. I love Italian spaghetti westerns. My favorite, my favorite. They gave birth to Clint Eastwood, right? Pan's Labyrinth is easy in my top three films of all time. Cool. What other movies die? Martin McDougal make. I don't know. Ennio Mas Maracon, rest in peace. Ennio was, uh, did the soundtracks for them. Great composer and mastro, yeah. I only know Seven Psychopath. That was quite good. Uh -huh. And later on, the American caused issues for the characters. Such a classic. There will be blood, envious. Such a phenomenal movie. I went and saw There Will Be Blood three times in the theaters in one week okay i think it was in four days or five days four days i think i went and saw it three times in the theater in four days phenomenal twice by myself once with a couple of friends one friend maybe two friends the Wooby blood was entirely too much of a slow burn for me powerful but slow i love the pace on it it calmed you down and then whoa, i think it's got three of the greatest scenes there's amazing great scenes but if there's a top 100 greatest scenes in movies three of them would be in there will be blood it, absolutely brilliant can we start with the soundtrack insane insane and uh the lead singer of radiohead did the soundtrack for that right i know it only came out uh, a year but should do midsummer at some point there's so much so much little things packed in that movie i haven't seen it oh that's the one with the psychedelic um where they go to that cult i saw the trailer for it, it looked phenomenal it's a belgian movie or a scandinavian movie my favorite from ddl daniel day lewis i think i think uh, i haven't seen every daniel day lewis but i've seen a few I think there will be blood is his favorite is his, is a masterpiece is his greatest performance ever absolutely brilliant chicho just got super hype yeah i love this movie man 
<laughs> really i and la i watched this again last night i wanted to be the last movie i caught up on and last night was the fifth time i was watching it right i watched it three times in the theater one time a few years ago uh, and last night really not gang of new york gangs of new york i've seen half of it um I, I should watch the whole thing i need to watch the whole thing i have to stop uh but yeah it it didn't compare to there will be blood daniel day lewis was fantastic in gangs of new york but gangs in new york was too uh, comedic for me there will be blood never broke character from what it was there will be blood didn't it, it the whole thing is a masterpiece one of my top 10 greatest movies of all time okay and i have like a hundred in my top 10 greatest movies of all time <laughs> was inspired from often uh, sinclair's oil oh i don't know that and by the way for me there will be blood is a historical piece showing the birth of the evangelical christian movement and the oil industry how they're intermingled so it's very political for me as well okay do you think that the movie implicitly argues that people like the main characters are needed for human development no i don't think so for there will be blood i think daniel day lewis in this might be the best performance by an actor ever on film uh, brother maple violent uh violet fine it's one of the top 10 greatest performances of all time it, without a doubt al pacino and scarface is another one um uh, my favorite Daniel Day Lewis's film is probably The Name of the Father. What a great movie! The Name of the Father, so nice. What a great movie! Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. My oh my, I too. I believe there will be blood is slightly paying homage to uh, the great giant. Yeah, I think so too. Lark, slightly, right? Uh, giant was an amazing movie but uh, the main actor uh, anyway giant is an amazing movie by the way but there will be blood is raw daniel day lewis was quite good in gangs of new york as well i gotta watch the whole thing i didn't like the other characters in gangs of new york especially uh what's his name the younger guy these streams need more than two hours. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson made so many great movies too. Yes, or else three. There will be blood. Greater Grands of New York, uh, for sure. Even though I haven't watched all of Gangs of New York, there will be blood. Is and I wouldn't put just one greater. Greater, 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 much, much greater than Gangs of New York. Ever seen Bone Tomahawk with Kurt Russell? Yeah. There's another fantastic actor love everything he said yeah bone tomahawk wow what a movie uh, another one is um western would be um oh i forgot the name of the movie um oh i forgot but it's much deeper movie very deep yeah gangs of new york i didn't find it to be deep at all i found it very shallow comedic right there will be blood just really the movie is just a masterpiece there i said it agreed with lark bone tomahawk haunts me to this day really avia 27 i fell asleep for a bit watching it and woke up at the pit where they get captured and they chopped that dude in half <laughs> bone tomahawk was so good so good they got the guy and that was the most violent scene right they got the guy splitting they <laughs> what the so good such a good movie yeah that scene in the cave is so grim so grim maple violent i don't think that's true i think that there will be blood is kind of a subversion of the typical american myth we get told about the noble front frontiersman i think the movie is saying uh that this sort of expansion of industrial capitalism has always been tied to bloodshed to be honest 
uh, T, uh, um, PTA, I don't know, PTA was also writing this at the time of the Iraq war. So the emphasis on oil seemed particularly relevant and the evangelical movement. To me, there will be blood is the birth of the evangelical movement in the United States, as well as the oil industry, the ruthless oil industry and how they're intermingled, right? And how they both feed on the ignorance of society, right? And they're at times in conflict with each other. Paul Thomas Anderson, a courageous and genius director. Paul Thomas Anderson. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, it says that. I agree with your interpretation. On the other hand, uh, so uh, hang hangman hang mansion i don't know agrees with maple uh violet yes uh i agree uh yes yes it says that i agree with your interpretation on the other hand it also shows how progressive uh is made because of how progress is made because of men's like like him james dean yeah a giant james dean passed away unfortunately and what an amazing actor halfway through giant it's a bit of a hot take but i think that it predicts a dualism good take toke says to maple violet cool 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 yeah leonardo dicaprio i like leonardo dicaprio to a certain degree uh basketball diaries was amazing maple violet i agree to an extent but i think the film makes us question whether this is really progress or just simply expansion to me it's greed it really defined greed in our culture greed of the people that want to control other people or want to control resources and i didn't know the history that was written at the same time as the iraq invasion it came out in 2007 i believe there will be blood so for sure it would have been written a few years before that because it takes a long time to get the scripts uh uh, approve right industrialism may be better lincoln was my favorite daniel i haven't seen lincoln yet i gotta watch it i've heard really good things about it just my interpretation what i meant is progress in the sense of how things develop so vicious haven't seen it yet i heard he was super into his method acting during lincoln yeah i've heard really good things about lincoln oh, for sure there will be blood also look by the way gang check this out i checked imdb and there will be blood the son the actor i forget what his name is in the is in the movie the son only has one movie in it credit to him in on imdb and I, I didn't check the wiki page or anything else does anyone know if his son in the movie has acted in any other movie i was amazed there was only one there was one other credit as well but uh there was only one that i saw elder god i think the oil took a toll on daniel's character every time he won a victory with the oil he lost something personal yeah indeed yeah he just lost his humanity but he was that way to begin with when he was sitting there talking with his uh, brother he just he said he just wants to be left alone he doesn't want to talk to any human being he sees nothing in humanity that, that attracts him right envious that's a good resume the sun got that one movie only and then such a classic such an amazing movie and i saw the pastor as a major image of daniel and could have been a good brother does he lie to his son at the end or does he tell him the truth he told him the truth bastard from a basket his son was just a bastard from a basket bastard from a basket by the way the three greatest scenes in this movie in my opinion is when the pastor the uh eli 
when he gives his first performance as, as an evangelical Christian, where he takes the older lady's hand and says arthritis and does his thing. Wow, 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 right? Phenomenal, right? The second most brilliant scene is uh, Eli and Daniel Day Lewis character when they bring Daniel Day Lewis's character, and before that, when the old man is talking to Daniel Day Lewis, what a dynamic, right? But when Daniel Day Lewis's character goes to church to be uh, born again, right? Because it is the birth of the born again movement, right? To be born again, and the interaction <laughs> between the the priest Eli and Daniel Day Lewis, oh my God, I could watch that again and again and again, and of course the ending scene. Of Daniel Day Lewis and Eli, their interaction. Drain it, drain it, drink your mind. Come and drink my your milkshake. So good, so good. As well. Great experience. Great experience, Lark. Watching that uh, there will be blood in the theater. I think that makes the film so great. Oh, let's check this out. Great thought. I like that. To Elder God major image of daniel day lewis maple violet i think there uh i think the thing that makes the film so uncomfortable is that daniel's um misanthropy is kind of sympathetic like uh, paul dano's character is so detestable that you're kind of on his side <laughs> paul dano is the the preacher right yeah you end up hating him oh yeah by the way gang here's a question i i god i'm so glad i remember to ask you this is there two brothers is there a paul and an eli or is there just one and did that did the preacher play both parts were they twins or was it just him playing the part okay what was it because at the end, Daniel Day Lewis, when he's talking about it, he says, Paul, I gave him ten thousand dollars and he has three wells going. And Eli is like, No, no, no. So I'm really curious about this. I haven't read up on this at all, right? I learned the word from the character trait in Chicho Streams. Misanthro therapy i have to look that up by the way i don't know what it means i saw the room blood in the theater the room blood was incredible it's a drama that felt closer to a thriller at the time yeah i love the scene where daniel is uh baptized for the oil for the oil elder god so damn good so damn good doctor i'm gonna call you doctor dr hang man matt if the end is the truth there does uh, then does that imply that the main character was a true devil from the start I didn't take that for some reason I am craving a milkshake Catholic traditionalist says <laughs> me too I'm gonna go get one <laughs> vicious uh, to maple that's a great point and plays into the duality of an evangelical and oil baron zach i just found your channel here do you always chat movies not always but we have today movie and on tuesday we have movies where we're um what do you call it we're gonna pick the next movies we're gonna watch and then we're gonna do another movie stream movie club is something new that we just started this is our first discussion about movies that we had as homework to watch to talk about so many powerful powerful scenes so many absurdicon i think it's just one maple so you think it's just one character must be him so you think there is no twin brother it's just him is so is he playing both characters or does he have dual personality that one is not aware of the other or one takes over the other i thought it was just one guy until he mentions to his father that it was Paul. see here's the kicker none of the other characters cheryl in the family acknowledge the brother right he says it was paul it was paul it was paul so is it because he has his uh what do you call it when someone has multiple multiple personality disorder where the family is afraid of him 
So because no one else aside from Eli, uh, Daniel Day Lewis and his son and the other person, but the other person doesn't he sees him, but we didn't see how he reacts, right? Those three characters are the only ones that acknowledge the existence of Paul. Paul Dano played both Paul and Eli. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. And I think Daniel kind of always knows that it that in the back of his mind, I believe they were twins. And he lied to Eli at the end about Paul's deal. Did he lie to at the end? I think he lied, but I have to watch that again. I always forget to keep note of this. Because if I remember correctly, Daniel Day Lewis mentions because Paul, when he goes in there, says he wants five hundred dollars. Daniel Day Lewis says I'll give you 600 if you uh, no, and then Daniel Day Lewis says, you know, I'll give you 10,000 if there's anything or something like this. And then Paul says it's 600 now. So was he lying? Did he? I got a feeling he was just pulling his strings, Eli's strings, just to poke his wound, right? I see and the scene when he cast out the devil from the church and it pushing pushing the viewer out then he turns back to the church and Daniel is standing in the doorway the devil so good elder God I love those scenes man I could loop those scenes Toke says absurdicon I think he embellished the details of the deal to make Eli feel worse told Eli that he gave Paul way more than he actually did just my personal hunch i think so too but i always questioned that absurd gone oh shit i totally missed that eli and paul could have been the same that's a yeah that's amazing right that would definitely be in the line with daniel day lewis's character yeah because he lied to him he said yeah sure we'll make a deal just say uh you're fake and there is no god or something like this right maple i think the uh, suspicion that he's playing both parts provides daniel with a justification for his be behavior because it seems he's not as deceptive as paul eli so i guess i'm not entirely sure but i think daniel is convinced that it's one person i, I don't know I don't know Cheryl Chicho so the father is aware that he's got a major psychological issue but never got, does anything about it it fits but changes a lot of my perception oh no it looks like I'll have to watch it again hooray <laughs> that's Cheryl and that is the reason why I went to see it in the theater aside from amazing soundtrack amazing acting amazing movie amazing times amazing release right at the Iraq war was going on Bush jr. was in power it was an amazing time right but one of the reasons I went and saw it so many times three times back to back was because I wasn't sure I was like wait a second I did the same thing by the way with existence and uh, the matrix right matrix you could figure out easier than there will be blood existence was on the same difficulty level to figure out what was going on when the turn happened as there will be blood really yeah i watched it and i still i'm not 100 percent sure paul and eli were originally cast as separate actors and were not originally brothers in the movie paul dano was later cast to play both characters and they were written as brothers were they catherine maybe the director decided halfway through the cutting to cut out all the pieces that really solidified that notion that there were two different individuals and they introduced the question right oh hell yeah i love existence yeah maple violet i love existence i love it and existence was came out at the same time as matrix and everybody was really going on, on matrix but i i consider existence to be on the same level as matrix and i like that film uh and i like that the film is about greed and power 
and how it can drive one mad yeah this show this shows how great this movie is it works on so many levels on so many levels elder god i love the small details as well like paul proves to daniel that there is oil on the land by saying no wheat grows there and when daniel arrives he is offered some food and he asks for bread ah i didn't catch that one elder god i love the part when they're sitting at the dinner table where daniel day lewis holds the father's hand and he goes my son you know he's not well and stuff like this holds the father's hand and paul is sitting there at the end of the corner and daniel day lewis is talking about quail and then paul says what about the oil <laughs> daniel day lewis he looks like he's so mad so angry that he was willing to reach over the table and just choke him right Wrote, new follower great goatee and look forward to watching your channel if you thank you very much for the follow uh ropey ropey how do you pronounce your name ropey all our all our streams are not movies we go all over the place uh, so i hope you appreciate what we do maple violet have you seen uh, video drum yeah for sure it's another cronenberg that's very similar to yeah video drum is amazing whoa such a great movie especially a period piece when it came out peace tree can get you killed peace tree can get you killed peace tree can get you killed <laughs> look i was laughing <laughs> fun oh my god we're into two hours gang we're into two hours let's take it down let's take it down great discussion great discussion i love this and by the way if you appreciate this movie stream thank you elder god because he's the one that recommended we do these so elder god thank you for recommending a movie club stream i think this is going to be a pretty regular repertoire for us to do because uh, man there's so many amazing movies to watch and some of us know some amazing ones that others don't and vice versa and everything right the milkshake by the fake brother the mistake by the fake brother peace tree oh i'm missing it elder god the peace tree dance the peace tree dance i don't know <sighs> however you like to pronounce it i don't mind but the true pronunciation is rorp the e silence okay okay rorp welcome to our channel and our live streams gang let's call the stream tomorrow we do a comic book reading 11 a.m pdt my time same time as we started today okay and we get to decide what we're going to watch uh on monday i believe we're doing a relationship stream and on tuesday we're doing movie club stream again where we get to recommend the movie vote on it and decide what to watch what the next movies are we're going to watch it's hard to spot as it links in uh, into a diary entry he read earlier oh elder god i gotta i gotta figure that one out enjoyed the new movie stream great picks great picks great picks gang thank you for being here mods thank you for taking care of business thank you for watching over things elder god thank you for recommending this everybody thank you for the feedbacks catholic traditionalists thank you for giving us the background on some of the stuff right gives us a perspective on what's going on uh thank you about the info regarding the soundtracks and whatnot okay if you want to follow my work gang i'm going to end with my intro and my outro i guess thank you chicho this was fun fantastic i am on patreon if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work patreon is where i'm sharing all that information patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike you can follow after following for a while if you like the work if you do have the means supporting this work through patreon is the way to go if you can afford it okay we are live streaming this on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o 
L I V E. If you want to participate in these discussions in the chat as we're having them, Twitch is where you want to be at. And gang, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. I appreciate them very much. And it is a fantastic way to support this project as well. And thank you for the discussion. I do announce these live streams, the scheduled ones, 30 minutes before we go live on Elo, VK, Parlor, Gabs, Mind, Gab, Minds, and Twitter for now. If you want to follow this work and some additional content that we're sharing there, sharing additional information, those platforms are a good place to start, and the links will be in the description of the video, and they are appearing on chat. Okay, we will be uploading the audio of this discussion. I got my lapel mic here onto SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c h y c h o. If you just want to listen to these discussions in audio format, you can find them on SoundCloud, and you should be able to find them on your favorite podcasting platform as well, including spotify and we will be uploading this video to youtube and bitshoot okay and if you want to support this work if you want to subscribe if you want to turn on notifications bitshoot and youtube you can do that on the links will be in the description of the video of everything that i've mentioned here and if you're on youtube if you want to support this work joining youtube membership is also a fantastic way to support this project okay thanks for being here gang and if you can make it comic book reading tomorrow ooh, ooh, ooh. let's do let's do let's see what we're gonna read i hope you have a fantastic saturday and i'll see you guys tomorrow or the next three days if you can make it bye everyone